It's approaching a quarter past seven. Now, MPs have been known to jog to work or cycle to work, but later this morning, MP John Prescott will take an unusual route and swim to work up the Thames in a protest against the government's policy of dumping nuclear waste at sea. We were going to ask Mr Prescott to have a, a practice swim up the canal at the back of our studios. But as you can see, there is uh, a bit of a problem. Absolutely no water or virtually none. But he's nevertheless come, prepared for his swim, in a few hours' time. And here he is. <laughs> morning. John Prescott, good morning. Um, really, it's, a, it's a obviously um, a rather unusual way of going to work. Is it really worth it? I mean, can you achieve anything? Well, I hope so. I think we want to get across to the people of this country that we're poisoning our seas by dumping nuclear waste in it. And I think if I get that home to the people, I'll have achieved something today. I would have thought it's uh, the safest place to put nuclear waste about 500 miles away from our coast and seal containers. Well, I'm afraid some years ago, many scientists tended to tell us that, but now we're beginning to find a connection between the nuclear waste leaking out into the seas and some ca connection of dumping in the seas with uh, cancer, high incidence of cancer in coastal areas, as we've seen from the wind scale. Now, that's very alarming, and it's alarmed the international community so much that in the South Pacific, we, Britain, and Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister, signed this motion saying, this convention, that we must not dump nuclear waste into the seas because it's extremely dangerous. But when we came to our own waters, the Prime Minister was not prepared to sign the European Convention, so Britain is the only country that continues to poison its seas by dumping this nuclear waste into the seas. We must stop it's it. It's even more dicey, presumably, to leave it on land, though. Well, I don't understand the logic of that argument. At least on land you can control it, like in Sweden. We don't know the, the emission of it, the dangers of it. At least you've got it in a safe, contained situation. They've done that in Sweden. If you dump it in the seas, nobody knows what's going to happen. This stuff lasts for 100 years, 200 years, um, emitting this kind of problem. And you know when a mother takes the little children at the summer to on the beaches and paddles in the sea, shouldn't she be assured that we're not having radiation and being emitted into the sea causing cancerous problems and radiation problems for our children. But it's That's even what closer to home if it's in land, on land, surely. And if, they, if there's a doubt about the containers, that applies whether they're in the sea or on the land. Well, I'm bound to say, if we can't actually control the emission of radiation, you don't help by dumping it in the seas. In fact, you can have some kind of control on it on the land, and the scientists don't doubt that. But what has happened in the London Convention is all the scientists have said, look, let's stop dumping it for two years and look at exactly what's happening. Every country in the world has agreed that, but Britain and Britain continues to accept the refuse of nuclear waste from other countries and dump it into a seas. We as seamen serving the seas, and I belong to the National Union of Seamen, are not prepared to tolerate it. And all the transport unions have got together and said, we'll no longer dump this waste and we'll back the international community. It's about time Mrs Thatcher and Britain recognised that we're okay. not prepared to poison our seas. One final question to you, John Prescott. Can you swim? Well, I'm certainly hoping to today. It's two miles, but uh, I hope it's over quick. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks.